Stories of Great Christians. From its radio studios in Chicago, the Moody Bible Institute greets its friends everywhere with Chapter 2 in the transcribed story of Peter Marshall, Chaplain of the United States Senate. This story is based on Catherine Marshall's biography, A Man Called Peter, published by the McGraw-Hill Book Company. Peter Marshall, like most of his Scottish countrymen, was born with dogged resolution. He would not easily give up his cherished ambition. Having told his high school friends that he was leaving to join the Royal Navy, he was unwilling to go back and face possible ridicule when he was discharged for not being old enough. His only alternative was to begin working. So at 14, he started as an office boy with a firm of civil engineers. And four nights a week from 7 to 10, he went to the Kirkbridge Technical School where he studied mechanical engineering. Well, that takes care of another session, Peter. Yes, that's right, Dave. What's the matter? Oh, a little tired, I guess. Working all day, studying at night. You should get out more often. Well, how can I? Just keeping up with these classes is work enough. We haven't any spare time at all. What about weekends? Well, there are always things to do at home. Besides, I'm trying to catch up on some other studies, too. Well, why don't you take a rest once in a while? Bob and I would like to have you come with us sometime. We usually go to rugby or soccer game on Saturdays. And we have some interesting doings at the church, too. Say, Peter, we've been sitting here in the classroom for two months now. What are you studying for, anyway? I want to go to sea. Then why are you in this engineering class? My boss wanted me to study. I guess it won't do any good. It's still the sea that I want, Dave. Well, everyone to his own liking. But listen, fellow, we'd like to have you join us some weekend. Think it over, will you? Mither... What's this magazine? The Congregationalist. We always take it. That's strange. I've never seen it before. Never seen it? It's been there on the table for over a year now. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. It's an interesting magazine. Rather strange item here, though. What's that? Well, look. An item from the Dumbarton Kirk. Signed by a Willie Marshall. Do we have any relatives there? Let me see that. Hmm. Willie Marshall. Do you know him? I don't know. Your father was married before he married me, you know. And he had a son. His name was Willie. Well, Dumbarton is only 30 miles from here. Mither, there's only one way to find out if this is the one. I'm going to visit Dumbarton for myself. Peter, I, I hardly know what to say. Of course we're brothers. Peter Marshall was our father. To think we've been only 30 miles apart all these years. It's a downright shame. It sure is. Peter, uh, what are you doing? I'm working in Coatbridge. Going to school, too. What are you studying? Mechanical engineering. Good. It's the way to get ahead. But I really want to go to sea. I always have. How badly do you want to go? Oh, more than anything else in life. Why? Well, I, I might be able to help you. I have some contacts with the McClay McIntyre Shipping Company in Glasgow. I'll write them about you. Who knows? You might be able to get a job with them. Message, ma'am. Oh, 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 thank you. What is it, Mither? It's a special delivery letter for you, Peter. 
It's from, from Willie, I think. Postmark Dunbarton. Oh, good. These are probably the letters he promised to send me. You ask me, these seals are more a uh, handicap than anything. Is it what you expected, Peter? Well, I haven't read the letter yet, Mother. Hmm. It's not from Willie. No. What's the matter? I can't believe it, Mother. I just saw Willie four days ago. What do you mean? He... Willie's dead. Dead? Yes. And there go my chances of going to sea, too. Unless... Unless I try on my own. Sorry, Marshal. You've got all the qualifications we want, and you're of age, but... Well, the Royal Navy can't take you now, not with orders to demobilize. Besides, things are in pretty bad shape all over the world. No, we're not accepting any enlistments at all. You might try some of the shipping firms, though. Hi. I came to ask for a job. I've been to six firms so far, and I haven't Listen, been able fellow. to... Did you see that big line of men waiting outside? Did I? I stood in it for five hours, sir. How much experience you got? Well, none, sir, but I've had education and... I... Education will never make up for experience. There are hundreds of experienced seamen outside crying for jobs. How goes it, son? All right, I guess, mother. I got my notice today. Officers don't need office boys when there's a depression. You'll find something else. I've tried everywhere, except the tube works. Why don't you apply there for a job? Well, Imperial doesn't pay very much. Only 38 shillings a week. That's better than nothing, son. You know, we're having somewhat of a hard time of it here at home. Yeah, I, I know, mother. And I'll help as much as I can. I'll go tomorrow. Just doing something will be better than staying idle. <laughs> I... I know I heard a voice. Peter. There it is again. If it weren't so dark, I could... Who's calling me? That's strange. I, I know I heard someone. I wonder... I, I can't see a thing. Feel anything either. If only it weren't so dark. What's this? No. No, the stone quarry. Two more steps and I'd have walked right over the edge. <laughs> Domini, it's over a hundred feet to the bottom of that quarry. I'd have died for sure. You heard a real voice calling you, you say? Yeah, three times. Nothing more, just my name. Mm -hmm. And when I got on my hands and knees and began to feel about, I realized I was on the brink of the abandoned quarry. It was so dark, I, I must have lost my way. What does it mean, Dominic? It means that God is watching over your life, Peter. He must have some great purpose for it, to intervene in such an unusual way. It's something to think about, my boy. Mother, I'm sorry, but, but I must leave home. Yes? You're all packed, I see. It's so far to the tube works, Mother. I walk two hours each morning and two hours each night. And if I take quarters near work, I'll save a lot of time. 
I'll still send you something from my paycheck, but there's and I'm not much you can send out of a thirty-eight shillings, Peter. And I, I still feel I should go on with my studies, but just going to and from work makes my night study impossible. You're doing the right thing, Peter. There's no other way. You're not cross with me. Why should I be cross, son? Just don't forget your verse, laddie. The first things first. The kingdom of God. And all these things will be added. Long ago I put you into the Lord's hands. And I'll not be taking you away now. He'll take care of you, my sweet bairn. Don't worry. Peter! Well, if it isn't Dave Wood. What brings you to Loch Lomond? Oh, I brought my Scott troop. We're up here on an excursion. Just now we're waiting for the next steamer. Well, why didn't you tell me you were coming this week? Bob Hunter is up here, too. We can make it a threesome if your scouts won't mind. <laughs> They'll be getting to call us the three musketeers as it is, Dave. Uh, maybe for once we should go our separate ways. <laughs> oh, nonsense. Say, you're having special meetings in your kirka here. Bob and I were thinking of coming down. Well, they're missionary meetings, that's all. That's all? What do you mean? Well, Dave, frankly, I don't go in much for... Well, for the services in the kirk. They're all right for my mither and the old folks. I, I like the choir, the socials, the scouts, but that's all. Well, it's your affair, I guess. Say, did you hear the news? What news? Well, you know, Bob and I have been kind of sweet on two sisters. Oh, yeah, the Christie girls. How could I miss it? You've talked of nothing else. Well, they're going to America with their parents, someplace called Birmingham. Hmm, that's not going to be so good, is it? Well, confidentially, it isn't so bad. We're thinking of going over ourselves. You are? Sure. Conditions are getting worse here in Scotland, and everybody seems to be emigrating. Maybe you will, too. No, no, Scotland is my home. Peter, tell you what. Bob and I'll come down to your kirk tomorrow and we'll all go to the meetings, the three of us. How about it? Oh, all right. That's why I'm talking to you young people. You're bought with a price. You are not your own. Christ died for you. Many of you have appropriated his salvation, but that's not enough. You have a responsibility to carry this message of salvation throughout the world, yes, to your next door neighbors right here in Tort Ridge. You're bought with a price, and such a great one it was, the life and blood of Jesus Christ. How can you shirk your responsibility? in the face of such a sacrifice. Dominie. Yes, Peter? I've come to Kirk only for what I could get out of it. But the meeting tonight opened my eyes, made me realize why God had spared my life. Dominie, tell me what I ought to do. How can I serve God? I don't know, Peter. But I know this, before you can serve him, first of all, you've got to know him. And so we conclude chapter two in the transcribed story of Peter Marshall, chaplain of the U.S. Senate. This story is based on Catherine Marshall's biography, A Man Called Peter published by the McGraw-Hill Book Company. This is another in the series of stories of great Christians which come to you from the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago.